The book of Revelation is filled with prophecies about the events that will unfold before, during, and after Jesus' return to earth. However, there is one in particular that is unlike anything the world has ever seen, and not even the most creative scriptwriters and science fiction authors would be able to create something so extraordinary and simultaneously frightening. The Bible says that when this prophecy comes to pass in the end times, many people will repent for having rejected God and His love. They will cry out for mercy and forgiveness, but it will no longer be available. Before revealing this future event that will astonish the world, you need to know about five other interesting events from the Bible that have already happened or are about to happen in the very near future. After that, we will explore what will be the most terrifying prophetic event for all those who are not with Jesus. Before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel. Just click on the subscribe button below the video and activate the notification bell so that you can receive the upcoming videos directly on your phone, okay? Now let's get started. The first event is the visit of the Angel of Death, also known as the Destroying Angel. This celestial being came to Earth around the year 1300, after Pharaoh refused Moses' request to free the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt. Because of this act of disobedience, God sent ten plagues to that nation, humiliating its people and each of their pagan gods. These ten plagues included the Nile River turning into blood, frogs covering the land, insect infestations, deaths of animals, Egyptians contracting skin diseases, complete darkness for three days, and finally, the visit of the Angel of Death. After Pharaoh's nine refusals to release the Hebrews from slavery, God instructed Moses to tell the people to put the blood of a lamb on their doorposts. This way, the Angel of Death would not enter those houses, and he would know exactly where to go to punish the Egyptians. So, the people of Israel did exactly as God instructed. And at midnight, the angel of death killed all the firstborns in the land of Egypt, including the son of Pharaoh and even the firstborns of the livestock. When the people of Egypt woke up in the middle of the night and saw their dead children, they mourned deeply. The second event, the vision of the depths of the earth. This phenomenon created by God also occurred in the Old Testament and had Moses as its protagonist. After the people of Israel had been freed from slavery and were journeying through the desert, a man named Korah led a rebellion against Moses and his brother Aaron as they led the people toward the Promised Land. Korah conspired against Moses and demanded that everyone be allowed to serve as high priests, even though there was no instruction from God about it. He thought it was unfair that only the two brothers had direct access to the Lord, and he felt such great envy that he turned a large number of Hebrews against them. God became so angry with this selfish act that he told Moses he would pour out his judgment against Korah, and as there was no repentance, God instructed Moses to tell the people to move away from Korah and his followers. Then the Lord opened the ground before Korah, his family, and his allies, and they were all swallowed into the depths of the earth with everything they owned. Thus these people went down alive to the grave, and afterward, God closed that crater, and they all disappeared from the midst of the people of Israel. The third event, the emergence of the two witnesses. This third biblical event is a prophecy from the book of Revelation that will occur during the years of the Great Tribulation. These two witnesses will be two men who have never died, meaning they could be Enoch and Elijah, two faithful servants from the Old Testament who were taken to heaven while still alive. Many also believe they could be Elijah and Moses because both appeared with Jesus during the Transfiguration. The most important thing is that these two servants of God will receive supernatural power from the Lord to perform incredible feats. They will appear when the world is under the demonic rule of the Antichrist. They will be dressed in sackcloth, a coarse fabric usually made of goat hair, and will prophesy throughout the world for 1,260 days which is three and a half years. These men will be hated by humanity because they will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to a world that will be completely blinded and spiritually lost. Some will listen, but many will not pay attention to their message. Others will become furious and attack them, but the Bible is very clear that if anyone tries to harm them, fire will come out of their mouths and consume their enemies. This will be an extraordinary spectacle to witness because, without a doubt, 
the Antichrist will be the ruler of the world and will not want anyone to worship the only true living God of the Bible. So he will do everything to attack these two witnesses. Additionally, these two men of God will have the power to shut the sky so that it will not rain during the entire time they are prophesying, just as Elijah did when he challenged King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. They will also have the power to turn rivers and oceans into blood and to strike the earth with all kinds of plagues whenever they wish. In this way, these two witnesses will preach with authority throughout the world. The power of God will be so strong upon them that they will literally be untouchable. And this will continue until we reach Revelation chapter 11, where the Bible says that after the three and a half years, the beast rising from the abyss will fight with them, overcome them, and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the main street of the great city, which will be called Sodom and Egypt, in the same place where Jesus was crucified. And for three and a half days, all peoples, tribes, languages, and nations will gaze at their bodies, but no one will be allowed to bury them. The inhabitants of the earth will celebrate the death of the two prophets who troubled them so much and will exchange gifts among themselves in celebration. However, three and a half days later, the Lord will breathe the breath of life into the two dead witnesses and they will rise, causing terror to all those who celebrated their death. Then, a loud voice will come from heaven, saying to the two witnesses, Come up here, and a cloud will take them away. At that moment, there will be a great earthquake that will destroy a tenth of the city's inhabitants. Seven thousand people will die, and those who remain will be terrified and give glory to the living God. The fourth event, Armageddon. The Bible says that in the last days of the Antichrist's rule, God will pour out his wrath upon the earth with plagues and suffering for all who denied him and lived in sin. Even in the face of this scenario, the nations will not repent and will still blaspheme against his name. So, at the end of the seven years of the Great Tribulation, Israel will be surrounded by the nations that join forces with the Antichrist. In Revelation chapter 16, the Apostle John recounts that the rulers of the whole world will gather for the battle of the great day of Almighty God in a place called Armageddon. The word Armageddon comes from the Book of Judges in the Old Testament. At that time, the people of God were small compared to their enemies. But in the battle that took place on that same mountain, they emerged victorious. In the book of Revelation, the Apostle John describes seeing the sky open, with Jesus riding on a white horse followed by all the heavenly armies, and on his thigh was written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Then, an angel calls the birds of the sky to a great feast, where they will eat the flesh of all those who died opposing the people of Israel. However, this war will not be like others that lasted for decades. In fact, the Battle of Armageddon will last a short time, as the enemies will be crushed without any effort, and it is at this moment that the seventh bowl of God's wrath will be poured out on the world. After this event, Jesus will cast the Antichrist and the false prophets into the lake of fire in hell, and all men who served him will be killed and eaten by the birds. Then. Jesus will imprison Satan and establish his thousand-year reign on earth, where he will rule together with his church and also with those who died during the Great Tribulation for not bowing to the Antichrist. Armageddon will not mark the destruction of our planet as many believe, because according to the Bible, the earth will be the eternal dwelling place for all those who have recognized Jesus as their Savior and have done the will of God. The Fifth Event, The Rapture the Bible says that there will come a moment when all Christians alive at that particular hour will simply disappear. They will be going about their daily tasks, working, studying, or taking care of their homes, when suddenly they will be taken to heaven. Yes, there is much debate about the rapture. Some believe it will happen as soon as the Antichrist is presented to the world, while others think that Christians will only be taken to heaven alive after three and a half years of the Antichrist's rule. Another group believes that Christians will go through the entire period of the Great Tribulation on Earth before being taken by Jesus. Regardless of the hour and day, one thing is certain, the rapture will happen. In Matthew chapter 24, Christ spoke about it, telling the disciples that at the right moment, two men will be in the field, and one will be taken, and the other left. 
two women will be grinding with a hand mill and one will disappear. This means that everything will happen in an instant, shaking the world and affecting everyone. Those left behind, unfortunately, will have to face the harsh reality of the last days, while those in Christ will be filled with joy and will remain in the presence of the Lord for all eternity. And so we come to the end of the five extraordinary events that have happened in the Bible, or are yet to happen. This leads us to the most terrible prophecy of all, the coming of the four demonic angels from the Euphrates River. All this will unfold when the Lord's angels begin to sound the seven trumpets of Revelation. When the first trumpet sounds, a hail of fire mixed with blood will be thrown upon the earth, burning a third of the trees and all the green grass. The second trumpet will bring the fall of something resembling a great burning mountain into the sea, resulting in the death of a third of marine life and the destruction of a third of ships and vessels. With the third trumpet, a great star called Wormwood will fall from the sky, poisoning a third of the waters and causing many deaths due to the poisoned water. The fourth trumpet will diminish the light of the sun, moon, and stars by a third, symbolizing a period of darkness. The sounding of the fifth trumpet will open an abyss from which locusts will emerge to torment those who do not have God's seal on their foreheads. This event is also known as the first woe, and it is with the sixth trumpet that the most frightening prophecy of all time will begin to unfold. When it sounds, four demonic angels who were cast out of heaven along with Satan and are imprisoned near the great Euphrates River will be released to kill a third of humanity. They will lead an army of millions of horsemen, causing destruction and death. The Apostle John says there will be 200 million soldiers in this army, all with red, dark blue, and yellow breastplates, and their horses will have heads like lions, and from their mouths will come fire, smoke, and sulfur. Their tails will be like serpents, dealing deadly blows to people. In total, a third of the Earth's inhabitants who remained alive will die, marking the last chance for repentance that God will give to people before they are condemned to spend eternity in hell. However, they will not turn to the Lord and will continue to worship their false gods. Brothers and sisters, I understand that these events are almost impossible to imagine because they go far beyond our human understanding. But know that the Bible never errs, much less lies. All of this is very frightening. But if you surrender your life to Jesus and live according to his word, the Lord will protect you from the day of trial and take you to live eternity by his side in the new Jerusalem, a kingdom where there will be no fear, pain, death, or tears. You don't need to worry about when all this will happen, but rather about who you will be with when it does. Therefore, delve into the knowledge of the Bible, walk according to the word of the Lord, and don't be deceived by what will happen in the future. Amen. If you enjoyed this message, share it with your friends, family, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video. May God bless you mightily.